Right, so I just wanted to show you guys how to look for uh, Psilocybe semilanceata or validity cap. Um, let me just show you this. Type. So this is a cow pasture. Um, a, a good indicator is to look for this type of grass, the Junicus um, inflexus. That's not. That's a quite a small one. Um, usually you see it growing in clusters. Switch the camera lens. So it often grows up in clusters like spiky lip, I believe they call it rush. Um, they grow pretty much on top of each other, next to each other, um, and all the rest of it. So that's some dogs. Yeah, I'm actually just in a local park right now. So just to show you sort of how easy it is, you don't need to go up into the mountains to, um, to look for it. So the Liberty Cap, um, it's ephemeral like most mushrooms are. Um, and it comes out after, I mean, in my part of the UK, which is Hampshire, it tends to be late October, early November. We just have to wait for those temperatures to start dipping um, and for the rain, for the rain to come. Um, the Liberty Cap is actually the first species of mushroom, or psilocybe at least, um, where that was the first mushroom somebody had ever recorded um, a trip. They actually hallucinated and wrote it down and documented it. Uh, this was the first species of psilocybe someone did that with. Uh, I might pause the video quick just while I actually have a look until I find one and I can sort of show you some more key identifying features about the plant itself. But there's loads of resources that you can use to try and find um, areas where they could possibly grow. So there's the magic mushroom map, um, which is pretty good. I prefer to use um, the, I believe it's by Landis, it's the UK acidity map. And it's got keys and uh, what have you so that you can sort of try and find your acidic, sandy, loamy um, soil types. Yeah, I will pause it now just to, well, I actually look for one to show you. All right, so I finally found one. I'll just show you it growing in the grass before I pull it up. Oh, she just bent over. I'll grab her now. You can see the top has that really traditional papilla, or um, I believe some people call it a nipple or a spot. See that just on the top of the cap there, and the gills are dark, dark purpley to grey. Well, they're actually on the mushroom. Um, but my favourite, my favourite identifier, or well, you can see it's actually sticking to me now, is the gelatinous pellicle. Um, I'll see if I can't spread the cap up so that you can see it. But can you see how it's being held together by like a, almost like a jelly, a jelly layer. That's what you'd call, that's known as the gelatinous pellicle. That's what's holding it all together. Um, that's the best way of telling it apart from any of the lookalikes. The Penalius don't have that layer. Um, I believe there's another lookalike. Um, again, it doesn't have the pellicle. That's, that's unique to the, to the psilocybe. Yeah, I just meshed it up a bit there, but you can kind of see the, per the spores actually now on my fingers, that purple color. They are, um, so they're actually, whoops, I just paused it. So they're actually hygrophonous, which means that they change color um, depending on how wet they are. So that one that I just showed you uh, was like the, the more typical of when they're soaking wet, the dark sort of brown caramel color. Um, and then as they dry in the sun and in the wind, uh, they start to turn almost like a skin sort of pale, like a pale sort of uh, Caucasian skin color. Um, and that makes them really easy to spot, especially if you've got the sun at your back and a nice, a nice big cluster behind you that's bone dry, uh, in front of you that's bone dry. They really reflect the, the sunlight off and you can see them from about 10 meters away. Um, but yeah, again, I mean, I'm, I'm literally just in a local park here. I just wanted to sort of prove how, how widespread they are. Um, you know, the, we've got a mixed deciduous coniferous forest to the right there and there's like a boggy um, 
wetlands just down there full of willow and all sorts of other native native species um yeah really it's that uh juncus juncus junicus grass i believe it's pronounced juncus j-u-n-c-u-s this stuff here if you if you see this growing um in a cow horse or sheep field you know chances are it's going to be a good place to to go look in You'll often, especially especially in Wales, um, we don't really get them too much down in Hampshire. Um, but especially in Wales, you'll also find them surrounded by wax caps, parrot wax caps, the crimson red uh, wax caps. They'll grow they'll grow next to each other and on top like on top of each other in the same cluster. Um, you see all this decaying grass. This is all really really good stuff um, for the Liberty caps. So they feed they feed off the decaying grass material. So this farmer's actually cut he's cut the grass down in this field this year so i thought it would be a better flush this year but i'd imagine it's going to be next year once all this is really worked into the earth um that's when it's going to become a um a much more sort of fertile fertile ground so hopefully next year we get a nice big flush um this, this spot here hasn't actually had that much on it this year and I'm struggling to find very much on it at the moment. About a week ago I pulled maybe a few grams off it that ended up being dry. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to, nice to get a, a bigger, larger one to show you guys. Um, but again, you know, I'm not, this isn't my main spot. This isn't where I go, I go picking for research purposes. I just know I know they grow here. Um, I just really wanted to show you to demonstrate how widespread they truly are. Like you don't need to go and climb the nearest mountain um, that you can think of to go and find them. You know, just look for those few key um, key facts about the lay of the land, about the plants, what they're showing you, what they're telling you about the acidity of the soil, um, and you're onto a winner, really. Right, well, it looks like all I can find are these tiny baby ones. I mean, it's still a nice example. You can see everything that I've been talking about. Uh, the stems are quite fibrous, I guess. It's the only other thing to mention. Like, that you can, you can bend them and, um, you know, quite they'll take quite a lot of beating before they'll snap. The stems really... Um, can, quite, can vary quite a lot depending on the length of the grass. Good look at that pellicle then just that just stuck to my finger um another look at the spores there i guess the only other thing that i really wanted to touch on in this video was the pronunciation for people uh so in the uk we pronounce uh the genus psilocybe as psilocybe um psilocybe is more of an american pronunciation um you could even say philocybe you know there's nothing in the literature that's that sort of explicitly states that it has to be silent but no one really no one really says it like that, although you will be understood. And then the last bit, semilenciata is the closest or the best that I can figure out how to say it. Um, yeah, psilocybe, semilenciata would be the pronunciation, in my opinion. Um, but as long as you really don't sort of miss out any syllables, as Alan Rockefeller has um, said before, you know, you can you can talk to any sort of mycologist, or botanist, or hobbyist around the world, uh, and they'll be able to under understand what you're saying. But yeah, that's um, that's that for this video. I'm going to wrap that up. I think just another look at the land for everyone. It's um, it's just mixed grassland. It's really open grassland is the best best environment to find them. Bonus points if you can find the Junkus grass, Junicus, uh, Inflexus. Uh, another really good identifying gra or another identifying plant to know that you're on the right soil type is um, thistles. Everyone knows what a thistle looks like. I won't bore you with the Latin name. Um, but yeah, if you can find thistles, then you're on to a winner. All right, hopefully next video will be uh, me showing you how to find psilocybe cyanescence.
um, but they're, it's not native to the UK. I have found them before. Um, they're quite rare, but I will hopefully my next video will be on a on a psilocybe cyanescence for all the uh, UK crowd that's realised that they are actually over here now. Um, they're a lot stronger than the Liberty Cap. Um, yeah, see ya.